kid, and welcome to Kid Time Story Time. Oh, hey, kid. Uh, oh, Olivia the Ostrich. I see you're here. Are you a fan? Oh, Fuchsia Fish, you know that I'm a fan of any woman who is an innovator, just like yourself. Oh, yes. Everyone knows I'm a pioneer in female ostrich theater. So, of course, then it stands to reason that you would also be a fan of Sarah. So, we're here to clarify something. Uh, oh, oh, you guys are? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because it's a sweet dream, Sarah. Uh, you might be under the impression, uh, understandably so, that this is a bedtime, nighttime, dreaming kind of story. And nothing could be farther from the truth. The fact is, you tell them, Fuchsia, that this is about the dreams that we have when we are awake. Not only awake, but what it takes to make those dreams a reality. Yeah, yeah, it takes a lot of work. And you know what, kid? If Sarah could do it with all the obstacles in her way, and there were many, you can too. Well, I think our work here is done. And I think your work has just begun, Storyteller. Well, you heard her. Off you go, Storyteller. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. I hope you enjoy the story, child. Oh, thank you so much, you two. You did not take up too much of my time. I appreciate that you clarified the nature of this book. And indeed, she was an innovator, and it was not hard to be an innovator where she was coming from. So if she can do it, well, you'll see. Before the Civil War, Sarah obeyed her owner. Hurry up. Eyes down. Don't speak. Slaves were property, like a cow or a plow or the cotton that grew in the master's field. That's right. Sarah began her life as a slave. But every day, Sarah dreamed of a different life. A husband, a family, a job that she loved. Her father was a carpenter. With a hammer in his hands, he could build anything. And Sarah thought, huh, she could too. That's right. Why couldn't she, you know, have her own dreams and build her own kind of life? Look at all that. They're in this, these slave quarters and they're, they're just lying on these, these blankets on the ground, cold. Then something happened that changed their lives forever. A new law freed people from slavery. Freedom! Sarah moved to Chicago with freedom in her pocket, hope in her heart, and dreams swirling in her head. Probably a lot like you. Freedom in your pocket, hope in your heart, and dreams swirling about in that head of yours. So she made her first dream come true when she married a kind stair builder named Archibald Good. Oh, a stair builder, and her, husband, and her dad was a carpenter. She likes fellas who build things. They started a family, and that was her second dream. Sarah rented out rooms in their home for people who needed a place to live for rent. And she saved every penny she could to pay her for her third dream, her own furniture store. Ah, so she rented out rooms for people who needed a place to live, like an early Airbnb. How about that? Every day, Sarah worked alongside her husband, measure, cut, sand. And every day, Sarah listened to her customers. Pretty crowded at our place. There were five of us crammed into one room. Sure wish the kids had their own bed. Oh... I see. She's listening to a need that is out there. Many of Sarah's customers worked at low paying jobs. And even those with big families could only afford to live in a one room apartment. That was very common. All the families, all the kids, the grown ups, everybody slept in one room. Sarah looked at the furniture in their store. Too boxy, too bulky, too big. Then Sarah had, ding an idea. Maybe she could build a piece of furniture that would save space for her customers. If she could create a new kind of bed that folded up when it wasn't being used, each kid could have their own bed. What? What? You mean that didn't already exist? No, kid. Somebody had to make it the first time. Sarah hurried to the lumber yard, clutching her precious saved coins. And when she returned home, she began building her invention, measure, cut, sand. What's the invention? We're gonna find out. Finally, she hammered in the last nail. 
Standing back, she looked at her creation, a desk, but not just any desk. Inside the cabinet doors, a fold-out bed was hidden. Sarah pulled, she pushed, stuck. Oh no, what do you mean stuck? Oh no, what do you mean stuck? It's stuck? Sarah took it all apart and started all over again. Darn it. But everything went wrong. Wood split, nails bent, the bed wouldn't lay flat. Ah, oh, cheese and crackers, it's hard to invent something from scratch, but so worthwhile. Sarah didn't give up. She took a deep breath and dove right in to fix it again. You know, her hands must be hurting by now, her back, her knees, all that hammering and fixing, but she's not stopping. At last, she stepped back and smiled. Now, when she pulled out the bed, it slid back in without a catch or a squeak. Archibald wanted to sell it in the store right away. He must have been so happy about it. But Sarah knew there was one thing she had to do. She dreamt it. She built it. Now she needed to claim it. Claim it. Sarah needed to get a patent. Now, what is a patent, you're asking? Good thing the book tells us right away. A patent is a piece of paper from the government that says no one else can make or sell your invention. If someone else got the patent first, Sarah would lose the right to make and sell her cabinet beds. So the deal is, if she started to sell it and somebody else said, huh, that's a great idea, I'm gonna go patent it before she does, they would own it and then she would have to pay them to sell her own bed. That's right. So she had to take care of that and own it. It's, it's like a early, it's, it's property, it's ownership of your creation. If you're an inventor, you need a patent. Sarah met with a patent attorney. They filled out the application. And in the meantime, she's at home. She's having to take care of her kids and, and, and reading all this stuff. She explained how her cabinet bed was a new and useful idea. Sarah slipped the documents into an envelope and mailed it. And that's when the waiting began. And you know, waiting, not fun. So months passed. Had the application gotten lost in the mail? Had they found out she was a woman or that she was black? Sarah knew that some people thought a woman should stay at home and cook and clean and take care of the kids. She knew that others though believed that if you had dark skin, oh no, they didn't have the right to own anything and certainly not a patent. But Sarah knew better. Didn't matter that she was a woman or that she was dark skinned. It's the quality of your brain and the quality of your invention that matters. Oh no, oh no. After a year, a letter arrived, denied. There were already patents on similar inventions, so Sarah needed to prove hers was different. How's she gonna do that? Carefully, she changed a word here, a sentence there, explaining more about her unique mechanism, so she was clarifying what made hers different from the others. And, and uh, she explained the, about the idea that had come to her so long ago, it's been over a year now. Slipping the paperwork and a bit of her heart into the envelope, Sarah sealed her fate and sent it off again. Once again, she waited. So she modified, not the invention, she modified her explanation of what made it unique. Yeah, she's smiling, it's good news. This time a thick envelope arrived from the US government patent office. <sighs> Ooh, slow deep breath, slid out the papers and read out loud. S.E. Good Cabinet Bed, <gasps> number 322,177, patented July 14th, 1885. That means it is the 322,177th patented invention in the United States of America. Staring at her name in print, Sarah proudly traced each letter, her idea, her invention, her name in history. She had built more than a piece of furniture, she had built a, a life far, far, far away from slavery, a life where her dreams could come true. She had a, a wonderful husband, kids, the furniture store she dreamed of, and now her own invention, something that wasn't even in her original dreams. Wow, that is incredible. Did you ever know the story? Because I sure didn't, and the author, well, there's all kinds of timelines now about you know, the Emancipation Proclamation and when Abraham Lincoln abolishes slavery and it goes on down the line. But the author, I think this is interesting, tells us that a lot of the details about Sarah's life aren't really known. What they do know is that Sarah's father was a skilled carpenter 
and today his property would be worth $150,000, which is a really extraordinary thing for a black man only five years after the end of the Civil War. So when Sarah was ready to start her own business, maybe her parents helped her financially because parents did that a lot for their kids back in the day. Um, and then the cabinet bed, it tells us, became extremely popular because it allowed people to save space. And her invention inspired other similar inventions in the future. Uh, the Murphy bed, the one that folds up into a closet, the bed that goes into a closet, was created later in 1916. And all over the world today, there are fold-away beds in use. I mean, have you ever slept in a fold-up bed? A sofa bed, a cabinet bed, a Murphy bed? There's all kinds of beds out there for tiny spaces. If you live in New York City, for example, you could really use a cabinet bed like the one she invented. So now you know the story of Sarah, the first black woman to ever hold a patent in the United States of America. No wonder the Fuchsia Fish and Olivia the Ostrich are such fans. Now you know, huh? Yes, you can see why we're such fans. Plus, I do love to have a cabinet bed for my guests when they come over. Oh yes, very comfortable, I might add. Very comfortable. I really had a good time that day. You should come back. Oh, I will, I will. Let, let me go get my seashells and I'll be right over. <laughs> Well, child, I hope you learned something valuable and learned also that persistence is key in learning to do something new and bringing something new into the world. I'm back and I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, and see you next time, kid. Oh, yeah. See you next time and stay inventive here with Kid Time Story Time. <laughs>